Happy Friday. I'm Lana. If you haven't seen me before and this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're ridiculously authentic and the butterflies are flapping around and the sun is shining and the wind is blowing and the sound of the wind chimes is off in the distance. Let me know where you're tuning in from. What are your health and fitness goals? How may I serve you? Hi, beautiful Antoinette and Christina. Will someone please do me one beautiful, rad, ridiculously wonderful flavor and favor? Please share it into the Ridiculously Authentic group for everyone else to enjoy as well. Today we're brewing up some freshly squeezed orange juice and some kombucha. So I'm about that time when I've got to brew that booch. So we're going to get our booch on. We're coming on a, a, what is it, a solar eclipse tomorrow. I don't know if anybody else has been feeling the energies. Um, like, ooh, ooh, I've had it. I've had enough. I'm ready to jump out of my skin. Oh my gosh. What is going on in the world, right? So what are you experiencing today? What have you been experiencing? Let me know in the comments how y'all are doing. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm, be, I'm about to start my moon cycle. The other day was the one month anniversary of my mom passing and you know, it's still very surreal. I go through waves of emotion. I'm angry, I'm withdrawn, I'm depressed, I'm just, I, you know, I, if you've ever been through grief and especially your mother or someone close, a parent, is, I think it's very impactful. Even if it's not your blood parent, it's someone's very significant. Um, I received a, a, a beautiful frame from my, um, the, the people that did the organ donation, beautiful, beautiful people. And it kind of brought me again back to the fact that this is a crazy time. And so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of emotion coming up. I mean, these are a lot of things that were sudden. I was totally unexpected. I did not, I really thought I was going to see my mom in this year. I, I had such high expectations and such anticipation to be able to embrace and be with her. We'd been speaking and talking and I was excited. Um, we had really lovely phone conversations, belly laughs, you know, all those things that moms and daughters do. I used to talk to my mom every single day, um, but she was suffering a lot with COPD and a lot of breathing issues and other grief that my mom has gone through her entire life. Hi, Carl. Congratulations to Carl. Congratulations to our rad star, bro star, Carl. Today's what, day six of no cigarettes? What, what? Yes, that's, that's huge. And so this is a huge time that for me, if you saw that we posted in the group, we had this butterfly chrysalis. It was a black swallowtail. And Tom shared with me that he was watching something about butterflies and he went and he looked and he saw the big black swallowtail butterfly flapping in the backyard. So he went to go around and it disappeared. Well, I just saw it before I came live now. And I'm going to tell you, that's the butterfly that's been hovering and hanging out with me. That's been an indicator of my mom. And so to me, that's absolutely beautiful. My mother knew how much I appreciated and admired the metamorphosis of the butterfly. Um, because of the transformation, it is such a powerful totem. The butterfly, for those of you who don't know this, it, when it goes into the chrysalis, when it goes into the cocoon as a caterpillar, it's going through so much change. It's not trying to resist it. It's just going through the natural process. We can't say that it does or doesn't feel pain because we're not on that level. But to witness it, my understanding has always been that as it's coming through and it gets ready to make its move and to push out when it's ready to, to emerge and spread its wings, that the only way it can actually flap and fly is to build up that strength, right? It has to start from within. There's a symbol, a symbol in itself. Everything has to start within. We have to build within ourselves the inner power, that strength, that 
trust, that love, that compassion, that patience, everything starts within for ourselves first. And just like this butterfly, it's creating this momentum, right? Moment to moment, every moment it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And so here's this beautiful butterfly and it's, it hasn't yet emerged, but it just knows if I keep going, I will fly, I will, I will soar. And then it finds its way out. But if someone tries to intervene, if someone tries to do it for them, if you try to break open that chrysalis to help it because you think it needs help, just like when people need to go within and need to work on themselves, nobody can do it for anybody else. You can't help someone to move and grow and evolve forward in their lives. So like I said, my mom knew the significance and the power for me and the, the attention that I give butterflies, how much. When I was a little girl, I, I drew out, I pencil arted the process of the butterfly in the metamorphosis and how it goes through the different stages of the, specifically the monarch. But this, this black swallowtail is kind of similar to me like a monarch. But then at the same time, my mother can't necessarily emerge as a phoenix rising from the flame, which was her symbolism, her, her name that she called herself as a truck driver. Like, that's the coolest thing. That's one way she knew I would recognize her. So that's how she shows up for me. If you haven't already shared this in the group, share this wherever you think someone can benefit. Butterflies, gardening groups, kombucha, fresh squeezed orange juice. We are going to juice it up. I can't juggle. I can do two at a time. I'm not trying to juggle too much. That's one thing I've learned in life. I don't have to do everything. I have to embrace where I'm at and just do what I can. And like the butterfly, I have to build up that strength from within. I, I recognize and I appreciate that. So going back to this time, this eclipse, what are you feeling? What are you going through? <laughs> what are you experiencing right now that's allowing you to build up the internal strength because this is what eclipses do. They cast a shadow so that you can look at the stuff you've been pushing away, shoving away, avoiding, right? And when we do that, especially during also a Mercury retrograde, this is time to bring back those passions you might have forgotten about, the things that have been on the shelf that I'll get to that, I'll get to that. I have to wait for that. Think about it. If we have a new moon too, that's about setting it's new intentions, about seeding what direction am I going in next? So for me, when I was sitting in meditation earlier, I was reflecting upon how, number one, I'm getting ready to start my moon cycle. So I'm like extra tuned in. Like I, I feel like I got the beam and my dreams are off the charts, which have been for years, but even more so this past year. And I'm recognizing that, you know what? Anything that I'm ready to start moving toward and grow from before that might not have taken off is coming back around for renewal, right? Because Mercury retrograde, you don't necessarily want to start something brand new, but if it's something you've been working on in the past that didn't take off, that didn't fruition in your life, this is the perfect time because you're getting ready to look at it and say, what was it working then? Let me see what it can teach me, the lesson from when it didn't work, and maybe you weren't ready for it or prepared, or you didn't have the strength to spread your wings and go with it, right? Just some words of wisdom to start off before we get really deep and dirty in the, in the house with this OJ. I know y'all want some. So these are just your standard navel oranges, nice and squeezy sweet. <laughs> Hi, De Dalila. Dalila, that's beautiful. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. So we're gonna chop these up. I like it pulpy, personally. I have to use a bowl. It would figure I'd forget the pitcher. Don't worry, I think I'll have a ninja by the time I get ready to do that. So we're gonna do this in stages and the most important stage of all of this is to squeeze the juice. So 
first off, there's the old fashioned style where you, you take the, the orange and you push on it, right? Then there's the plasticky versions that are in the stores that are really easy. But this electric one is amazing because it has a spout. So this is a Phillips and I know there's other brands out there. I really like this. The whole top part comes apart, easy to clean. The whole piece comes out. Um, I highly recommend it if you don't have one. I'm going to use this big bowl until it gets full and I'm going to place it underneath the spout because you have only so much distance between there. So let's see, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut up the oranges. What are you having for this Friday breakfast? And if you hadn't already said, where are you tuning in from? What are your health and fitness goals? Talk to me, baby. It is Friday. We're getting our freak on. It's a free for all. I'm feeling it's fun and physical day. I woke up on fire. <laughs> I'm like flex, baby, flex. Yes, that's what it is. It's flex Friday. Flex with me, everyone. Can y'all flex those muscles? I know you got it in ya. Get the back in there. Okay, I'm a little silly. If you've never seen me before. <laughs> Hey, life is short. We take ourselves way too serious. And then where are we gonna end up? Does anybody remember that there was that song and it just popped into my head now? Something about, to the funny farm. Funny farm. What is a funny farm? Anybody know? <laughs> All right, so. I'm just going to start half, I'm halving these up. I don't know how many of these I'm going to end up using. And I've got my trusty towel because here in Florida it's a bit humid out so it's sweating on them. And the wind is blowing so if you see me swaying, that's what it's about. It's all about swaying with music. Alright, so, and I really like the pulp so I'm known to just try to scoop out the pulp. I've got my spoon over here and I'll eat it as I go. I've got my own little glass off to the side. And what, when I make up this kombucha, I'm going to make myself a glass because I'm thirsty, thirsty. I brought myself some water. Make sure you're hydrating. This is summertime. How are you staying hydrated this summer? I guess I could have brought something to put these in. I, I did really well, though. So, for example, how many of y'all like this part? As long as it's not really gross and, um, listen to me, gross, it has, doesn't have a lot of the white pith. The pith is actually good for burning away belly fat, especially grapefruit. I had a new appreciation years ago when I learned that. Along with uh, broccoli is really good for uh, defining your abs. So I love broccoli, cruciferous, the cauliflowers. Heck, when I was a little girl, I used to eat whatever I was told was good for me because I trusted my adults, right? Back in those days you were told you should respect your elders. Some people did and some people didn't. Sometimes that was a good thing and sometimes not so good. But we learn as we go that appreciation um, is something that has to come from a form of respect, right? And what is important in priority, right? I also want to know how many of you all are rock and rad stars and have you introduced yourself in the group? Because this is the beauty of our, our amazing rock and rad star family is we have an amazing community of just beautiful people showing up to support, to uplift, inspire, and empower one another with the power of the social media, right? So the vision, of course, that Tom and I had was to not unite everybody far and wide using the power of social media. It's really easy to um, get caught up in a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, but this is a place that we created for you to come and feel supported in a way that maybe your life's not going the way you want it to, but you got people you can turn to and it'll help you remember who you are and why you came here. Mm. So again, like I said, I really like the pulpy part, and sometimes when it gets really thick in there, I just, ooh, hello, I got it on the table, it's okay, I'll still lick it up.
it's a great way to get some fresh beet vitamin C. One of the keys is, look at that bowl filling up. When you freshly squeeze something, the majority of this is going to go into kombucha bottles to make fresh squeezed orange juice and spiced kombucha. But when you make something fresh, you really want to consume it right then and there because otherwise it starts to oxidize, right? The oxygen hits it and it loses the antioxidants, right? So if it's oxidized, it's no longer full of antioxidants. Hence how different things can survive, pathogens and such, because they thrive on the sugars, which is what happens is the sugar content process, it changes from a natural sugar for you, for your energy, to a sugar that's not necessarily as healthy for you, but it'll feed all the other stuff. So we want our food as fresh as possible, as close to source as possible. Oh my gosh, I think that's a black swallowtail that's just fluttered by, <gasps> keeping me alert keeping me aware. I love that. These are the blessings in my life. I, I mean, I truly can't, can't complain. Life is good. My dad and I are going to go to the market tomorrow. I'm feeling all silly. I haven't had a lot of time to spend with him. I didn't get a chance to spend my birthday with my dad, which I normally do every year. This year it was mostly to spend with my goddesses because I needed to be with my goddess girlfriends. And, uh, yeah, you know, family's important. If your parents are still alive, take time and make sure you let them know how much you appreciate and love them. You know how, hmm, you know how long they're gonna be around. I certainly wasn't ready for my mom to go. I still feel like I'm not ready for her to be gone. But I humble myself and remind myself daily she's with me. And then I honor my feelings when they come up as well, because that happens, right? Nothing happens overnight, that's for sure. It's all cumulative, right? So. I also try to pick the seeds out beforehand. There's really not a lot of seeds in this particular variety they're little itty bitty ones and they get filtered out with this beautiful uh, filter that's in here inset there's a monarch love the butterflies do y'all know what totem animals are and if you do do you have one it's like a spirit animal or an animal that shows up to you daily that you you identify with it's almost like it's speaking to you because that's what it is animal speaking animal speak speaking and conveying a message only you're meant to hear. For me, I've had many totem animals. Crows, very intuitive, very insightful. They've got like that vision like an eagle. They're also very, what's the word? Um, territorial, as are blue jays. We've got a lot of blue jays out back here. And they'll run off other birds. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Laura. Where are y'all tuning in from? Let me know in the comments. What are you doing today on this Friday? What do you got planned for the weekend? What are your health and fitness goals? Where are you at in your life? Are you feeling the eclipse that's coming up tomorrow? How have you been feeling the eclipses? And how have they been impacting your life? I've been seeing so many different posts from various friends and and rad stars regarding, you know, a lot of stuff coming up to surface. I know in my own life, I'm just trying to ride those waves, right? Don't let them consume you or overwhelm you as much as just breathe into them, right? Go with the flow, surf them. It's the only way we can really truly get through life is to just Ease and grace. Ease into it. Let the grace overcome you. Be humble and recognize that we don't have any control 
over anything except for our reaction to whatever it is we experience. I love fresh squeezed orange shoes. What, what? Welcome from SoCal Robin. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I like to do this because otherwise the pulp will keep the, the actual orange juice from going through. It'll just kind of sit on top. How about blood oranges? When I lived in Italy and I went down to Sicily, which is mostly known for the blood oranges, um, it's arancia di sangue, or yeah, arancia di sangue of blood, right? And they're really, really yummy. But I haven't found any here that resemble those oranges because they, they're not quite as sweet. There's a totally different flavor. So it must be maybe there's various varieties, various varieties. I think today is Friday Alliteration Day. And with the various varieties, every flavor will be different, right? Just like figs. Figs are my all-time seasonal fruit. What's yours? I know this time, when I lived in Italy, this is when the figs are really popping. All the way through September. I would go to Venice for the film festival every year around what we have Labor Day here in the States. Mmm. Haven't been to Hawaii yet, and I have been to visit to the Big Island. So when I would go to the Venice Film Festival every year, this was a while back, I would buy kilos of figs and just eat figs for breakfast. And they fill you up. They also keep you very regular, and they're very good for healing the gut. Are you a fig fan? What's your favorite seasonal fruit? Let me know. Mm. Mm -mm. Off to the side, I have my big kombucha bottle jar. It's two gallons, and I'll show it to you. Does anybody out there brew kombucha? If you brew your own kombucha, you know it's a process, and it takes a little bit of time. It takes a lot of patience. It's a lot of fun. It's like, like I like to say, alchemy in the kitchen. Mm. Oh, yeah, right? Tomatoes. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I love the grape and the cherries. I like the small ones. I lived in Naples, Italy. So in Naples, you have the earth is very potent with the volcanic um, minerals, which is why the Campari, the, the, um, the vine tomatoes in Italy are so famous because when they're grown around a volcano, they're very high in nutrients, but they're really flavorful. I had a girlfriend come to visit me years ago, and she says to me, Lana, I never liked to tomatoes until now. She goes, they're just amazing. I can't believe they get over the flavor. They taste so good here. I said, yeah, that's the difference between the United States where, you know, our, our, our earth has been over um, processed, right? Just like anything, when you utilize something so long, but you don't give it a time to breathe, to recuperate, rejuvenate, restore, that's what Mother Earth needs too. There used to be something called um, rotational uh, harvesting and gardening. As farmers, you know, those who are farmers, they know that there was a time when you, you rotated the crops that you grew and one crop would give back to the earth where another one would take from it. Nowadays, I don't, I don't know, I'm not as involved as I used to be. Yeah. So we're learning, we're trying to go back to our roots, right? How many of you have your own gardens? Do you garden? Do you have plants? Do you have trees, fruit trees? I grew up in the Northeast, originally from Boston. We had, um, it was very common to have apple trees. We moved to Maine. I grew up climbing trees. Mm. I also eat the, pith, the fiber out of that. We grew up climbing the apple trees, so, you know, I got a little spoiled. I missed that part. I'm a climber. <laughs> I had tree houses. I had my dad's tools. <laughs> oh, Iowa! Wonderful! I love hearing people have gardens. 
We need to get back to the simple things in life, right? I mean, a small garden doesn't, doesn't take much, but it takes a lot, right? It takes time, attention, devotion, practice, appreciation, love. But don't you notice when you get produce from your own garden or even somebody you, you know that shares their garden with you, you feel the, fr the fragrances, the taste, the smells. Everything's so much more vibrant and rich, right? Hi, Keila. Hi, Tanya. It's amazing the difference between fresh produce from your own garden and just going down to the store where maybe it's lost its vitality because you don't know how many steps it took to get to you from where it was picked by the farmer, went into the, 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 the barn or wherever they store it. I say barn because that's how I imagine it, even though I doubt it is. And then it has to go in the containers and then it's shipped and it's moved and it's, there's so many different steps between you and your food. We don't even know it. So how long from point A, from farm, to your plate are there? How many days do you think your food takes to get to you? I mean, I understand they put apples and oranges and lemons and limes and things like that in warehouses. That's why a lot of stuff is so waxed to preserve. And then you have all these coatings because they, they keep it so that they can hold them longer. They can put them in a warehouse. Does anybody actually know the process? Okay. I'm getting there. I, I brought a lot of oranges outside just because I wanted to fill the bowl as much as possible. Mm. Do you like it pulpy? I like it pulpy. Mm, Mancini. Green and artificially grown with hormones and dipped in wax is still about looks. Oh my God, I did not know that. I love ruby red grapefruits. Mmm, yummy, Kila. That is amazing, especially if you can grow them yourself. Cherries. Cherries are another favorite. Those are like my dad's favorite. And when we were in Portugal three years ago, we were buying kilos of cherries. He was just so excited about it. It was kind of cute. Hey, Dad, where are the cherries? I ate them all. <laughs> But he really appreciated because me, I'm the figs and he was the cherries. And I was really shocked at, you can get cher uh, figs in a lot of places on seasonal to the, the regions. Like Greece. Greece apparently had two different seasons for the figs. And they're like the size of your hand. So many varieties, right? Welcome Katie and Barb C. Thank you for joining on this beautiful Friday morning. I'm over here squeezing some oranges, fresh squeezed orange juice. Ooh, you know, not as much need to press it and squeeze it yourself. I'll let the machine do it. In Italy, when you go to get a fresh squeezed orange juice for breakfast, it's called a spremuta, which is a fresh squeezed orange juice. And they have a machine that has like an opening and you just start dropping the oranges into it. And then they come out and they give you your glass of orange juice. Oh, that was one of my favorite things to do. Get my fresh clash, then my cappuccino. Yummy! And then fresh fruit. I would usually try to reserve the cappuccino for after my dinner because then, you know, the warmth of, the, of that warm cup of cappuccino is good to stimulate the digestion on top of what you've eaten. It's just one of the things I was learning as I was um, transitioning my my diet to whole food plant-based is that it's really helpful with aiding in the digestion so again if you're just tuning in hi Cheryl darling I got lots of look at all this beautiful pulp pulp it up baby I love pulp pulp it pulp it pulp it <laughs> it's a gorgeous day here today. Mm. I like my fiber. How about that? Give back to the earth. I compost. Do you compost? <laughs> mm, 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 mm. 
All right, I have five more over here. And then we'll be done to move on to the kombucha. Again, how many of you all out there like kombucha? And then the fly has arrived. You know, flies represent patience. Ants are builders. Do you have an animal totem? Something that shows up to you daily? Mm. Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Like I said, there's really no seeds. I mean, the, the only seeds I've had are these itty bitty ones. And so they're not going to hurt you if you accidentally eat one, right? Oh, lavender strawberry. Ooh, that sounds so good. Oopsie. I had a little spillage off the side. <laughs> I have the towel. I'm good. Nothing a little water spray with the hose won't hurt. We'll clean up. Yeah, this is so awesome. So this is kind of like one of the processes that I do when I'm preparing. Um, it, is, it can take a long time. Um, but this is just only taking so long because I'm doing the oranges and I really enjoy sharing with y'all. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. Mm -mm -mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how nature shows up and like just the detail when you cut open, you know, there's, it's like a flower. It's sharing with you the beauty of the process it took to get to where it's at, right? You know what I've done with the SCOBY, Deb, uh, Robin? So I have taken the SCOBY and made SCOBY jerky. I did, did a video a while back. I know it's, it's somewhere here on the page. Basically, I took the SCOBY, and these SCOBYs are big. I mean, these SCOBYs are bigger than the size of that bowl. Um, I've taken the SCOBY, placed it in the blender, the blend, the pit, I have a blend tech, and I've added fresh berries and some sweetener. Like, I say sweetener, I like just vanilla stevia, for example. The vanilla stevia imparts more vanilla flavor to it. Um, some spices, maybe. You can even add a little chili pepper if you like it spicy. You know, chia seeds you know, to give it a little texture also. And then you put them in the dehydrator. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can put them on a Teflex and put them in the, in the oven on a low setting. I prefer the, the dehydrator. It smells really nice in your house. Oh. You can use some orange juice in it too. You can use whatever you want. And you gauge it according how thick it is. You don't want it to be too thinned out with liquid, for example. Because if you put too much liquid, it'll take longer to dehydrate. But you want the chia seeds to also absorb the liquid. And so it's, it's like fruit roll-ups, but better. With probiotics. The birds are chirping! Alright, last couple. We're finishing it up. We're rounding it up. Do y'all have any good weekend plans? Oh, look at that. Look at that pretty flower in the middle of that orange. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's cool, Keela. I've, I've put my scobies, I give them away a lot. I um, put the scobies also in the compost because you can compost them. Um, so many rad things you can do with SCOBY. One of the things that fascinated me years ago is that people are making clothes with them, right? So then you could also use them to make, um, you can make paper. You can do crafts with it, right? Awesome, Carl's making carrot juice. You can do so much with the SCOBYs. You, if you're artsy, you're crafty, even imaginative in the slightest bit, you can do all sorts of good stuff with the SCOBY. I hadn't had a chance because I'm still in the process. You know, there's so many things in this life that you can only do at a time. But I have a lot of visions of things I want to try. And I used to want to be a fashion designer. Now that hasn't changed. I had tons of art with designs I had designed. 
but in the process of living and growing and moving with my family, things got lost in shipments and lost and moved, which is okay, things happen. How about you? What was the passion you had as a child that maybe dropped off that you think you could bring back to light with this eclipse? Any of you out there having any epiphanies as to where your next direction will be? I love this part. You just get the little softy softies off the side. They're still juicy, juicy. Almost there. See, if I don't clean off the top of this, it won't it, it won't get all the juice out, right? Mm. I love the sounds in nature. It's just really nice to be outside. I need to get to the beach again. Downsizing, oh, downsizing and simplifying. I'm, I'm feeling you. Trust me. For me, I'm, I, I find that if we try to tackle too much at one time, and we overstepped what is a priority, like we try to add something in that's really not a priority, all that does is, is delay us getting done what we need to. So. The most important thing I found with downsizing right now, especially with everything I've been through and still dealing with and processing over the years and not just recent, um, I find it really important that you prioritize what you need to get done in this moment that's going to help you with the next step. Not just, I need to do it, so let me just do it now. And I say that because we can overwhelm ourselves with all these things that we say, I need to do this, I need to do that. Don't shoot on yourself. I should and I should and I should. Don't should on yourself. It's a slippery trap. And all it'll do is you, it'll set you back. It's a slippery trap and all it'll do will set you back, right? Ah, hi Debbie. I feel ya, I feel ya. I think we all do, but remember to be kind on your mind that no matter what you get to, that each each little bit is a significant milestone and just celebrate those milestones because I know for myself I'm very much like and my, my brain is constantly on fire I'm constantly thinking about the next thing I need to do and it hinders me from getting forward if I if I allow it to so again priorities are key step into what is going to serve you in the moment not what you you should think what you think you should do because that'll just hold you back from moving forward. So my hands are gonna be really messy. I just realized normally I have a sink next to me so I can clean it. Ah! Aw, oh, I love you too, Laura. You rock, sister. I've been missing all of my Rad Star ninjas because, you know, I, I try to stay as engaged as possible. So if you haven't heard back from me, just reach out. I'm, a, I'm still here. You can tag me at any time. Ah, oh, yes. I'm a, I've got a Capricorn moon and I'm very much, I may appear on the outside with that Leo drama and flair, right? I've got the hair, but the reality is, is inside. My, new, my true nature, because I'm a, a Libra rising, a Libra rising is all about keeping balance, right? <clears throat> See, your sun sign is how you appear to the world, right? So people could assume that I got it all down, that I'm, you know, I'm all cut, put together. But my, my Libra side is over here going, I'm just balancing scales, trying to make sure things work. I got, got it all going on, like this is covered, okay, that's covered. Let me think about this before I move on to that, right? So to me, I feel like I, I try to maintain balance in all of the areas of my life. I'm going to use my water to wash off my hand because this is really sticky. I heard a boom. Clean hand, clean hand. Oh, oh, buddy's getting excited. He heard, heard the... He heard the Pedego. Oh my God, rad, super rad. Y'all got to see this. I got to flip that screen if I can. I'll come over there. You do that, baby. You got to see it's purple. It's our purple. Okay, maybe you can flip the screen. Did she, 
Did she purple? Oh my god, did she do that this on purpose? Is our, this is our group color. This, this is, our, is our, our purple. This is super red. You can see it right there, honey. But it's covered by everything. Can y'all see What's this up, beautiful bike? Isn't it amazing? Share this in bike groups too, by the way. These are so rad bikes. Here, I'll, I guess. Share it in a well, Pedego. You can up, you can are you done? Did you no, I'm, all I did was the orange juice and I was going to ask if you got back in time to go get that big picture that I forgot to bring out. Yeah, I'll go grab it. He, see, I knew I'd have the ninja here to help. Hi, beautiful Trish. Oh, yeah, and so Aquarius is the opposite sign of Leo, and this is a Leo new moon from my understanding. And with this Leo new moon, those of us Aquarius and Leos with a lot in our chart are really super feeling it, right? He's going to grab that pitcher for me so I can pour everything into this big bowl. Ooh, i got to be careful because I'm dribbling over here. Again, if you, how do you like your pulp? With or without, filtered or strained? Yeah, oh, look at all of this, and I am thirsty, thirsty. I put your other one in the freezer just to keep it cold. Um, I made him up a special coffee and berry kombucha blend. I'm gonna go grab that. He'll give you a little thumb action. So it's a funny story. I like to go to thrift stores. Who all out there likes to go to thrift stores? And. My dad wanted a pitcher. So, me over here, I find this beautiful pitcher, right? I don't know, I paid maybe five bucks for it. He didn't like this pitcher, he wanted the other pitcher, which I was happy for because I really like this pitcher better. So, so tell him what kombucha this is. So this, I'm gonna stir it up, baby. You know me, I like to stir it. <sighs> Coffee with blueberry, ginger, vanilla. It's really, really good, by the way. This looks, I love you out here. This is an awesome workstation. Isn't it lovely? Oh, all those oranges are being... It's better than in the kitchen, huh? It is when it, the weather's, it's got a nice cool breeze. We're very fortunate. I'm just saying that right now. Drink up your water too. Stay hydrated. Per, per, perfect time for a shout out. We have our very, very first group sponsor. Drum roll, please. And it's Pedigo Bikes. They're going to be sponsoring the group for two months. And, uh... Beautiful Caroline, she has St. Pete Bike Shop and the Clearwater Bike Shop. And they're letting us ride their bikes for the next 65 days. And we got a really cool interceptor right here, which is the rad purple color, which is the color of the chive, kind of right a little bit darker. And uh, really, really excited. So you're gonna see a lot of videos of Pedigo. Thank you, Caroline, if you all are interested in buying them. They're anywhere between 2,700 to 5,500. And they'll literally change your life in two weeks because they'll let you explore places and get outside and uh, find places even in your hometown maybe a park that you used to go to that maybe you just didn't have the energy or you didn't have a bike these won't wear you out you'll still get a workout and um, you can go up to 60 miles on a five hour charge off at 25 miles an hour isn't that cool that's great training for the ninja over here yeah i ran a mile barefoot today because i'm trying to get calluses all up on my feet I really, really like this setup. Do you like it? I like fresh squeezed mm. orange juice. I like the pulp. Mm. That's still good. See, even, oh, the best part's underneath because it's all nice and creamy. That's good. I'll let you finish up, yo. I love you all. I'm riding my pedigo. I'm riding my pedigo. I'm riding my pedigo. Oh, you got your hands full. I was going to say, if you want to take that inside, that would be helpful. He's so sweet. He's. He's ninja helping me over here. Usually I, I sue for him. I know, right, Carl? Carl's a Leo. He's on day five. Keep going, Carl. Six. Keep going, Carl. You can do it. Aw. I let him know. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the kombucha and I'll put it through here. Pulp. Yeah, the fly is excited because the fly's like, I got fresh food! Yay, yay! Oh, there's more butterflies. A little yellow one. Who are my butterfly lovers? Oh my gosh. Okay. So now we're going to stick that off to the side. Here's where it gets not hairy, but it's a lot more intense. First, I'm going to step over here real quick. I've got all my bottles over here ready. I've got my 
I'm gonna unplug. I'm actually plugged in. Are you plugged in today? I'm unplugging the juicer. All right, so as much as possible, I'm gonna try not to make a mess. Now the flies really, really like the kombucha, so you gotta be really careful. But the first and most important part is pouring into this part here. Now as you know, especially the ladies understand this, when you go to pour this, it's gonna to start to go down here. You gotta get it just right so that it doesn't do that, right? So here's the fun part. Well, I did pretty well considering, right? So that can go inside too. All right. What I'm gonna do is put this inside the bowl just because I, I really try to eliminate the mess. If you really want, you can lick it up. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in, right? All right, so the booch. Here's where we move on to the kombucha. I also have this. I'm gonna put this over here. It's gonna be messy, messy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I try. We got, we got the OJ, we got my water because I'm, if you're drinking kombucha, you need to also put in more fluids too because the kombucha has the caffeine and you want the water because it's a probiotic, it's actually cleansing and flushing out toxins. You wanna to make sure you put more water in to flush out the toxins. So there's a lot of ways we detoxify. Sweat, right? Going to the bathroom, just saying. Using uh, chelators like parsley or cilantro, foods that, that pull and draw out the heavy metals and toxins in our bodies. Oh, hello. Excuse moi So now we're gonna pull the kombucha up. I have a, blend, a towel over it because I really just know that the, the flies can get in between crevices, like you don't know. And if you haven't dealt with fruit flies like I have, you don't want to. If you have made kombucha and you've had a fruit fly incident, you know what I'm talking about. It only takes once to freak you out and get extra cautious. So, ooh, it's spitting at me. This should be pretty potent. It's really helpful to follow the phases of the moon when you do your kombucha. I have about three or four different size scobies in here. They grow on top of each other, basically. I'm gonna have to remove at least two of these because it's too much in here. It's taking up too much space. What we're doing today, what I will be doing later is brewing the tea, but what we're doing right this second is we're going to make the blend, the mix, right? And I like to leave it on the counter a couple days before I put it in the fridge so that it creates the fizz that everybody pretty much likes about kombucha. If you're a recovering soda drinker, it's probably one of the reasons you like kombucha because it has a fizz, right? Let me know, are you recovering from soda? All right, so I like to keep the spoon from touching anything else. And you have to keep your area sanitary because the thing is you don't want citrus in there. It will completely change the makeup. So it's kombucha needs to stay singularly by itself. You don't want to use metal in it. You don't want to add um, the plastic I use just to transfer from here into the bottles. So like for the first couple bottles, I'm just gonna do some plain. So my dad always comes over here. He needs a refill on his plain kombucha. I use a funnel. See these beautiful cobalt bottles? A lot of times the cobalt bottles are what I use specifically for the, just plain kombucha. The clear bottles are flavored. The bigger bottles I tend to make, sometimes I'll make a, a, a blended kombucha and sometimes I'll put just plain. My dad likes to pick up the 32 ounces because he does what I'm doing right now. I turned him on to fresh squeezed orange juice and kombucha. Oopsie, here we go. So here's a filter. What you'll find if you do kombucha enough is that the kombucha will have all these threads, right? Like for example, and I'm gonna show you, maybe you can see this. This is a reused little plastic container. So it's gonna be a little bit funky. Let's see if I can show you this. So you see all that in there? Can you see all the, let me turn it around. You see all the threads? I use this to filter it out, right? Hi Tara, welcome, welcome, welcome darling. Where are you tuning in from? 
And so what you'll see is it'll create the sediment, which I have to strain out, usually throughout the course of, of filling the bottles. And I use these little, little cups because it's just easier. It's easier to transfer. You can use bigger. I mean, you find your process. Everybody's got to do their own thing. This is mine because I know I've been doing this a while. Uh, let's see, 2018 now. I've been doing this so almost eight years. You want to make sure that sediment and stuff does not get into your kombucha bottle. kombucha on the sides so just for visual you'll see how much this actually fills up Georgia in the house she's a Georgia peach welcome Georgia peach Tara all right so see how this is that's a little bit of scoby in there that is the threading and the sediment from the tea sometimes what I'll do is especially with the scoby bits I'll kind of squeeze it through so they get the liquid out of it I got one happy fly, y'all. It's a big one. Big and fly. And so what I'm gonna do with this, because typically I would have the sink or the compost next to me, is I'm gonna bang it off to the side here. And now it's clear again, and I can start all over. So this bottle needs maybe maybe a quarter of this. What's your name, lady? Some ninja just right up on me come around here often, so. Sometimes. Flutter, flutter, so. Hop on. Let's go to Mars, baby. What's that song? You gotta ride. Ride the po white pony or white horse, right? Oh, Brenda. Thank you very much. I truly appreciate that. And everybody who's reached out to me, I... I'm so grateful to you all. I, if I haven't reached out, I've also still got, you know, for those of you who donated, I want you to know that if you donated to our to the GoFundMe for my mom, I have not forgotten about all of y'all. If you didn't get the meal plan, please make sure you reach out to support at raw-authentic.com and we can get that to you. Also, I haven't even had a chance to go over the finances of it all. I believe I did go over the amount that I received, but that's okay because it really helps significantly. You have no idea how that, that for our family, that really helped offset costs because we didn't anticipate what happened. Ooh. And so you just don't know. Um, you don't know until you know it, right? You don't know what you don't know until you know it. That's just the fact of life. So this is one bottle and I, I will typically fill it to the ridge just a little over up in this area here but I don't like to go up he beyond this spot here so you see how be I love the blue bottles I love them but because I clean my own bottles I do not <laughs> I do not put flavored in the blue bottles I put them in the clear bottle so I can look at it and know what it is and sometimes I forget the irony is is that I may make them and go I'll remember but later on I'll look and go oopsie I forgot what that is it's okay. It's all good. At least in my mind it is. So this is going to be another cl uh, plain one because my dad, we're going to go to the market tomorrow, so he'll be coming by for his booch. His booch fill up, we'll say. Oh, that wind feels so good. I think we're going to get some rain. There's a dark cloud over me. It's probably why the lighting gets so good. When the sun shines and the rain falls our normal time of year we get the rain we're in rainy season here in Florida anyway how many of y'all are here in Florida let me know in the comments if you're in Florida what part of Florida you're in we have a serious problem right now <clears throat> that's killing off our wildlife and I don't know how many people are aware of it but I do want to know because it's it's really it's it affects everyone not just the people here in Florida living here but it's it's our ecosystem if our animals in the wildlife and wa in the water cannot survive a dying off, everything in, in nature supports one another. Even the bugs that you don't like, maybe the ones you try to kill all the time, 
It is supporting another creature's livelihood. You know, if there weren't bugs, what about the spiders? If there weren't spiders, what about the birds? You know, you got to really do the tracing back to everything serves a pur purpose in this, this cycle of life. That which you dislike does not mean it's not handy dandy, right? Okay, I need to put something in there. But I don't have anything. Arr. I got a second fly that showed up. How do I clean the bottles and sterilize them? Well, that's a process. So I use hot water and soap, and I have one of those push-throughs. Um, it has this, the scrubbies on it, but I also have a little green scrubbies that you can use to scour and clean. So I cut them in little squares that I can, like rectangular squares, and I make them so that I can get them inside. I do around the top of the, the lid of the bottle, and then I take, especially when it's really dirty, I, I will take the, um, I don't know, what is that called? The, it's got a long metal piece and you push it down. Bottle scrubber. I use the bottle scrubber. And the bottle scrubber does a really good job, but I don't. it's really hard to get in these bottles. So I will use the little scrubby, the little green one by itself, unless I absolutely need to use the bottle scrubber. Oh, wow. You know what? I hadn't tasted this to try it yet. I already know this is going to my dad. This is really, really good. It's perfect. It's exactly the way I like it. My dad will be happy. A couple days on the counter, it'll, it'll build up its fizz. See the color? And see, when I do, I have another one that I do. See that yellow? It's kind of like a... I use a blend of teas. Not everybody does the same way I do. A lot of places you'll find that they'll do... Um, what is it? Uh, black tea? I find black tea is kind of, kind of acidic and it bothers my stomach, the lining of my stomach. That's for me. I'm gonna do a second one. But not everybody has the same problems I do. And if you have a very sensitive GI tract, you gotta, you gotta be careful, right? So, other than that, cleaning the bottles, it, it can be a pain, but you know what? I reuse them. I'm all about recycling. Uh, it makes sense. Dishwashers to me are pointless. I don't they don't get anything clean in my opinion. I stopped using dishwashers years ago just because of the fact that it feels like you're washing the people are like rinsing and washing their plates before they put them in the dishwasher. Why not just finish washing the plate? At that point you pretty much you're doing three steps because sometimes you gotta wash it after it comes out because it didn't wash to begin with. Ooh, hello. So I stopped using dishwashers for that purpose. That reason that rationale, that experience I was having. It's, I mean, a dishwasher is good to sanitize, but it definitely won't sanitize or clean those bottles, that's for sure. What, what does it taste like, depending on the flavor? Well, the tea flavor, if that's what you're asking, Carl, the difference for me is I feel like the blend that I use is a lot smoother, and the black teas are just, you know, it's just a preference too, because again, just like anything, sometimes people like the different types of teas. The green tea is a little softer. I'll do a mix of white tea, green tea, gunpowder tea, yerba mate, um, sencha. Uh, if you use something that's got florals, like jasmine, it will totally change the probiotic pH of your scoby and everything. So you want to keep them simple teas. No um, herbals, no aromatics, unless you're doing something specific and you you already designate that particular batch and that SCOBY to it. Um, oh, look at that, look like a, well, an octopus of threads. But you, you know what you, you know, after you've been doing this long enough, you know what you can do and what, you, what, what your experience is, right? You apply the information you get and you get the wisdom through your experience. Just like anything, somebody can tell you, but until you do it yourself, it's not gonna make any sense it won't be you have to integrate knowledge is power but wisdom is is experience right so there we go so bottle number two dad's gonna be happy he usually gets his two bottles do I have an orange oh I wish I did I my Brenda last year I had um, there there was something that ate all our oranges some critter see how how it is when the, the Sun hits it the difference in the sunshine that awesome. So last so year I lost my orange tree. Oh, you saw it? 
No, that's so pretty how you lift that up. Lift that up again. I love the natural lighting out here. So beautiful. Is it e coming? 18 minutes. Okay, we're wrapping. Stay out here though. Oh, Stay out here till it rains. It up. Oh, Here's MG. 18 minutes. Look, if that's where we are. If you can see what I see in the background, it's right there. Just play and wrap because I want to see how rain. How, if you can play out here in the rain. Just ninja flip about something else. Someone asked if there's orange trees out here. Yeah, that's what I was just answering about how I lost my tree last year. Um, that was Brenda, right? So it's unfortunate because I did. I lost my tree. So what I'm going to do before I move on to the bottles is show you. I don't really need that right now, so that's okay. I'm going to show you what I what I normally will do. Um, so like I said, I like it pulpy. That might be a little too much pulp. We're about to find out. I'll take the orange juice. Pour it into the glass. It, you know what? It might have been a little bit too much, but that's okay. I can drink it too. Where's your phone, Sister Christian? I'm, <laughs> he's so funny. Nutmeg. So there's a couple things you can do. I usually had ginger, and I forgot the ginger. The ginger means I would have to cut it up, like mince it up really fine, because the powder that I normally have, I, I realize I don't know where it is. So that probably means I need another bottle of ginger. You can use allspice. I started out making this particular blend ultimately like a chai, kind of like the pumpkin spice blend. Tom has this Kauai pharmacy, which is Cacao Elena, which has a mix of turmeric, cacao, and yellow ginger. So there's ginger in this. So I'm going to use some of this. I also like to use the vanilla Omica Stevia because Sometimes, I don't use it necessarily in this, but I might. I just brought it out just to give you ideas. And this is Ceylon cinnamon. Now, to let you know, there is a huge difference with Ceylon cinnamon. It's very good for diabetics because it'll balance your blood sugar. So I like to add it to anything that I utilize that's, that's sweetened so that it, it will also help with that regulation. Do I need it a lot? I think we could all use a little bit of blood sugar balancing, right? So I'm doing this in my own glass, and I just use the tip of my spoon, little pinky pop. Get out of there. You're not allowed in my juice. Get out of my juice. All right, so that, and then, like I said, we're going to use the cacao Elena. Oh, it is usually dish way. Oh. Has anybody tried any of these? Again, the tip of the spoon. I tip my spoon to you, sir and ladies. Madame, mademoiselle, monsieur. And then maybe a little bit of allspice. Allspice makes it nice, right? What? Right, Brenda, if you have diabetes, I highly recommend Ceylon cinnamon is extremely beneficial for blood sugar. Ooh, maybe there's a mosquito on me. Oh, we might not even get that storm, by the way. We didn't get the one we thought we were going to get the other day either. So there's a lid. <laughs> Sometimes I lose the lid while I'm at it. So, and nutmeg. Now to me, just a dash of nutmeg is really is a dab do ya kind of deal, right? So then, toot. Now, this is where we add the booch. Let the booch come out. Let the booch come out. We're going to have some fun. Let the booch come out. All right. You definitely don't want to touch like the orange juice to anything that's going into the kombucha because again, the citrus, well, my sister will tell you because she had a bergamot, an English tea. She, she sent me a picture of her scoby. Years ago, I was working and living in Naples, Italy, and she was stationed with her husband up in um, Germany. And while they were up there, I brought her some kombucha so she could start up and I brought her scoby and all that. And she tends, she sends, no, she didn't have a scoby. I just told her how to do it without the scoby. And she sends me a picture of like what looked like cottage cheese in her kombucha batch. That's what the oils will do. If you, there's any essential oils or anything citrus, it will change the scoby into cottage cheese or the appearance of. So now, because I added that to the top, we have a little wind blowing in there. Look at that. So I've got the pulp on the bottom. And see, these were glasses my mother sent me. 
So there's extra special. Most of them are broken. I think there's two left. This and another. One says, one side says love. You see that love on there? Pinky pop. The other side says truth. My mom was all about truth. All about truth, all about love. My mom had a very big heart, that's for sure. And I what I received in the mail the other day was um, from the organ donation organization, letting us know that her kidneys were, were received by the same person. So somebody, it was a woman that's in her 60s that um, it gave me a lot of information about the woman. It was really super sweet to read and that I was really happy to hear that she received my mom's kidneys. Then we heard about tissues and uh, the bone, the, the, the skin for grafting. I had no idea what they could use skin grafting for. And what I also learned was that there's a separate organization that will contact us regarding her eye donation. Oh yeah, the little flies are coming out now. This isn't gonna last very long. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Bottoms up, cheers everyone. This is the perfect thing for, this is the perfect thing for um, summertime, is fresh squeezed cold kombucha and all that. Uh, yeah, fantastic. So that's what I do. That's just one glass. I'm going to let Tom open his package. I am totally moving all this stuff out and I'll move it's on. Rain. We what got I'm going to do, we're going to finish up and let Tom do his thing. And I'm going to bring this inside so I can do my thing inside. Well, this might be yours. Let's open it. Hi! Oh. I didn't know. I didn't order anything that I can think of. <gasps> I didn't see it's, it's it. It's ours. So, first off, I want to thank every single one of you for all of the donations. This is probably one of the best things I've bought so far with the donations. And Lana doesn't know about this, but this is gonna take our content, our videos, our live streaming to the next level, especially when I'm Kawhi. Check this out. Y'all, this is so amazing. If y'all wanna make a donation, it's uh, Roots of Hope. I have a fundraiser. We've raised over $2,300 in like 20 days. And check it out. This is the Osmo Mobile 2, so we can live stream, and uh, it does panoramic all by itself. It has face tracking, so you can move around and it will follow your face. Isn't that cool? And then when you're walking, like when we're doing interviews or something, it just flows because it goes up and down with you. So oh, that's the floating one that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I'm going to strap this to the bike, y'all, so when you tell me where you want to go, to like, you know, wherever you want me to go, it will be like a smooth ride. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you. Tina, especially. Tina donated a thousand dollars, y'all. I thank you so very much. We've had 41 donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm excited! Can we try that? Yes. This is the one you just made? Yes. I'm gonna make the rest inside just because the weather seems to be pulling in a storm. Mm. But I truly appreciate all of you all who tuned in to share and partake. That's so good. You can't have um you can't have that unless it's freshly made like that. Hmm. That's like an experience. Like it's so good. Thank yummy, you. yummy, and lots of it. Let's see if we can do a left spin boom without hitting your shit. Oh, let's move some things then. <laughs> Y'all know this could get dangerous. No, we're good. She does a love spin bunny hop. Here we go. Thank you all for joining us today. Watch your heels. One, so one, two, three. Boom! What? Keep it raw. what? Stay rad. No, I'll take it over here. We have to look at each other. So oh, keep sorry. it raw. Stay. Wait, wait, wait. We haven't no. done this in a while. She That's gets why. to look at her bunny hop, and it's a little bit difficult because we can get a splinter. Ready? Set? Go. Boom! Boom. Keep, it, keep raw. it raw. Stay, Stay rad. rad. What? What? what?